ballots doesn't need an explanation, does it? Okay. Nope. So, <laughs> Israel retractor. Okay. Looks like a huge rake, and that's what it is. I've never seen these sharp. These are only dull, as far as I know. Um, total hips is the most common place that they're going to use these. Nerve root. This is not a true nerve root retractor. It's the closest example that we have. The true nerve root is much, much narrower. Okay? And it's just what it says it does. It retracts the nerve root. The nerve root sits right over the disc. So in order to, if I want to take the disc out, I have to get the nerve root out of the way. You bag the nerve root. That means you cut it in half. Whatever that nerve root went to is what that deficit the patient will have. I've done a case where they bagged the nerve root that went to the patient's bladder and went to the patient's colon. So she had stroke. She had incontinence of both areas. Yeah. No. And you can't fix this. Once the nerve is gone, you cannot fix it. So this is a very important step. Okay? And occasionally you'll be asked to hold this and hold it. Okay? Nurses are bandage scissors. You want to take off somebody's cast, right? All that, remember we told you they put lots of padding on? And it's usually three rolls that go on a patient's leg, rub roll, and that's a couple yards each in each one. So you want to unwrap each one of those? No, you cut it off, okay? We also use this for the C-section so you don't cut the baby, right? Mm -hmm. okay. These are much bigger when you want to take off the cast padding. They're about twice the size, but they still have this so you can't cut the patient's skin. Okay, arthroscopic scissors. Um, I'm not asking you to know the names because they all vary a whole bunch for the places that you go to. You do need to know that it's arthroscopic though. Okay, and it locks, right? So you put it in and it's locked. He wants to use it, he opens it. Okay. Okay, um, phone hook. What, green? When did what procedure did we have a green retractor on? Thyroid. Okay. Thyroid. Also called a window. window. Okay. Green and window. And they are called by both names. Okay. It doesn't say green, it's window here, but it needs to be added. Okay. This is a bone hook, right? most often for amputations of large bones. So you can hook this in the end of the bone, lift it up, because there's no more leg there, right down below. And it's kind of hard sometimes if you did this here, there's nothing to hold. And it's much easier to hook the, this into the bone and lift up, because they want to see underneath to make sure there's no more bleeding. Okay? Bayonets, these come with and without teeth. Okay? Very important how you pass these. Okay? The whole idea of this curve is so when I'm holding this, I can see beyond my fingers because usually when they're using this, they have a hole that's this big. So if you're doing this, I see nothing, right? If I do this, now I can see, okay? Neuro, E, N, and T are the big users of these, okay? So when you pass this, make sure that you pass it to the person, okay? That that's up, okay? You pass it wrong, you're going to get a little story about why this should be go this way, you know? You pass it again the wrong way, you're going to get a very disgruntled look. The third time, he's going to say, what's wrong with you? Okay? Because every time he has to, the neural has to look up and away to fix this, he takes his vision away from where he's right at, and then he has to readjust everything. So it's very important for him on this. Okay? Hudson Chuck, you use these to put in um, they aren't really drill bits, but they look kind of like drill bits, and you have to put them in manually. Okay? You drill a hole first, and then you put these in on top of it. Most often used with the external fixator, which we're going to get into on Monday. Okay? I said Monday, not Tuesday. Okay? Monday. Baby Holman. Okay? These come in all different sizes. Big, much longer, wider. And this has to, the only one we have is the baby, but they all have this configuration to them, okay? Even if it's wider here. You put this behind the bone, let's say this is the bone, right? Okay, so I put this behind the bone and then I can pull back and use the bone as leverage. And this holds all the tissue back. So when I'm using the saw, I'm sawing the bone 
and not tissue. Okay, I'd much rather solve this if I'm going to solve something rather than the person's muscle. Okay. Bone cutter. This is a small one. They come all different sizes, all different shapes. Um, this would be used like a finger <coughs> amputation, something like that. Okay, or toes. Straight curettes. You can gouge out areas. Um, if you wanted to do a bone graft, where do we take a bone graft from? Uh, Most common? Um, um, yeah. crest, okay? So you can use a gouge or you can use this. And they'll take out, especially a large one, they can take out large section of what kind of bone do we want to take? The spongy bone, right? What's the name of the spongy bone? Cancellus. 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 Okay, so this is what you can use to do this. And you can manually do this. Mm -hmm. It's that soft. Cortical bone, you cannot. Okay, it is hard. Okay, so, obturator with sheath. You saw this when they did the scope the other day. This is a blunt one. So they'll usually start with the sharp one in here. After they get it through, then they change to the blunt, okay, or dull, okay? So they don't damage any structures on the inside. Four knife handles, what size blade does it take? Four yeah. is uh, 10 or 15. 20 and above. 20 and above. Okay. Um, single action rongeur. So you can take bites of bone with this, right? And that's exactly what they do. If they take bites of bone with this. You want to, let's say I amputated my finger or arm. So I want to clean up the ends of the bone. And they're going to take bites and make sure that the ends of the bone are very smooth with this. Okay? You want to take off more bone? You can do that with this also. Okay? So this is single action, right? Everybody understands the difference between single and double action. Okay? <coughs> bone tamp. I want to, I take that lovely little bone graft, right? And I want to pack it down in. Any air space that's left with the bone graft, you don't get good bone healing. It won't fuse as one. So I want to make sure this stuff is tight as tight can be in there. Okay, so I'm going to take this and tamp it down in, and you're going to hand him a mallet, and he's going to make sure that this is exactly tight. And then it, as he tamps it back in, he's going to put more in. Okay? Anybody put down brick on the ground? Mm -hmm. Right? What do you have to do first? Lay down gravel, sand, and what do you have to do to the sand? Get something that compacts it down, right? Okay. Otherwise, you're all uneven. <coughs> Your bricks don't aren't even, okay? Same kind of deal, okay? Ragnell, hands, great for hooking a tendon, hooking it out of the way, great for small incisions. Ragnell looks a little bit like a sin, mm -hmm. okay. but no cat's paw on the end. Ortho likes these a lot. Hands and feet, you're going to use these on. Um, Adds and Beckman, okay? Large, if you want to think of an extra large wheat lander, okay? <laughs> the advantage of this, you have a big incision, back incisions. Occasionally, though, I can ask these for hernias. For the guys, it's 350 pounds, and he has all the weight right here. Well, that little wheat lander that you have ain't going to cut it. <laughs> You're going to have to get this. Okay. Occasionally, they want this, but mainly for backs, they use these. And they come with sharp, dull, and three, four, six-pronged. You open up somebody's back this much, you're going to put one at one end and one at the other. The advantage of these is it'll sit in the incision like this and these go out of your way. Otherwise, if we had the straight wheat landers, this would go up and every time you passed, you'd be hitting them. So these then lay flat against the back. Okay? <coughs> is it back and hernia surgery? Oh, well, occasionally. That's when I've used it. But most commonly backs. Okay? But any large wound that you want to hold open. Okay? It's not, you know, okay? Curette's ready to use those. Um, drill bits and taps. Okay? So first you drill a hole, tap. This makes the screw holes the same as the screw you're putting it in, and it holds the screw in place better. Okay? So you're going to tap it. They've got self tapping screws now. <laughs> One step you don't have to because you have to tap by hand. Okay? And it goes into the quick coupler. Okay. Everybody knows what a quick coupler is, right? Okay. So all you have to do is make sure that this goes in the right place and you can hear when it seats. 
make sure it does see and doesn't pull back out because he takes it and he does this and the thing falls on the floor. Okay, so make sure it's seated before you pass anything. Okay, so you have to tap it with one of these. Okay, and it's by hand. Okay, and then you have to take this back off and then put this on so then they can do the screw. Okay, Use, most times they put the screws in by hand. They can power them in, but most of the time they tend to, especially if it's a small bone. Time you did that, a little tiny screw, it's already in before you're even, it's more trouble than it's worth. Okay, so that's when you're going to have to take these back forth in and out. Okay, tap and drill bits. Drill bits are almost always used with power. Okay.